thinking about and talking about little steam engines. My uh, YouTube videos, there is a, uh, a little slide valve uh, horizontal engine that I made. This was made as and uh, instruction manual and the materials that you had to machine. Uh, it was, it worked out very nicely, but I thought I could make some improvements. So uh, that's in fact what I'm doing now, and I'm going to tell you about it. The, uh, I thought first I'd make it vertical instead of horizontal, a little larger, and uh, change a few things and make some improvements. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you now. This is the general arrangement. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've made it vertical, I've given it a larger flywheel, I've changed some of the, um, the actual details of construction, I think I've improved them, I've changed the way it's made, and uh, I've put a very simple uh, reversing linkage here. Uh, the original and, and the... Uh, a uh, manual for the engine were we talked about joy reversing gear, joy and valve gear, but uh, I've looked into it and uh, not that I'm an expert, but I can't see, I think it's Hackworth. Anyway, I've uh, made it slightly bigger, I've improved the breathing in the valving here and uh, and I'll show you now some of the things that I've done uh, so far. This is the cylinder block. Um, I've increased the volume of these cavities here and in order to increase the breathing into the cylinders, instead of a single rather larger hole, I've drilled two uh, angled or the area of these uh, two smaller hole, holes is actually considerably larger than the larger single hole so I think it will breathe better and uh, anyway I've uh, I finished that it, it looks very nice and uh, this is ready to be assembled when I finish the rest um, this is the assembly of the flywheel, crankshaft and uh, the oscillating arm for the valve gear and I'm going to take it apart and show you how I've changed that from the original design. First difference is uh, this is the crankshaft and the crank disc. Um, originally this was supposed to be machined out of one solid billet, the disc and the shaft, and the eccentric, which you can see here, was a separate piece. Well, uh, since that had to be carefully aligned, I thought, well, if I machine it all together with a crank disc, it can't go out of uh, adjustment at all, and it gives me a little bit of extra thickness so that I can press in the shaft, which is just ordinary drill rod. But uh, that's a good, it's a good steel, a tool steel, and uh, anyway, that's how it worked out. Uh, I made the crank disc and the eccentric all in one piece and pressed in the drill rod shaft. Now the next part, which I think is of interest, is the eccentric a little piece of brass, but I, and I thought it has less weight than the original um, eccentric arm, uh, which had a lot more um, metal on it and uh, of course that increased the out of balance oscillating weight so uh, I changed that little design 
and let me show you what I did to machine the profile. I made this. This sits on top of my rotary table and I made this with, of course you can see there's two little holes in the actual arm so it can be fixed here using these two holes and bolted down and that gives as the table turns you can make these cuts uh, but then if you rotate it and use the other holes you can do the other end so I thought that saved a little bit of time and of course <clears throat> these are the off cuts the bits that, uh, and uh, makes quite a little pretty thing. What I did here was I drilled one, two, three, four holes to make the corners of the changes from the profiles and uh, drilled the holes so that I could hold everything down in place from this little piece of flat brass and uh, anyway it worked out very well and there I have this nice little eccentric arm. Now in order to keep it in place obviously as we put the arm before you have to keep it in place so I did a little bit more of eccentric machining and this is simply a little eccentric flat plate which sits over the shaft and when it's aligned properly it holds everything in place. I'm going to align it and show you to you. Uh, it is assembled uh, there it can't come loose and uh, it can't come out of register with the crank disc itself. The next part was the main bearing which uh, I made from uh, aluminum bronze which is uh, a difficult to get but it's a very nice machining uh, metal and it's very good for the uh, uh, for bearing purposes so here's the there it goes you see let me see there the whole thing and once I slip on the flywheel there we go we've got that whole assembly together now that's about as far as I've got for the moment and uh, as things progress I'll give you a better but here have another look at this uh, little um, jig I made to hold and to machine the eccentric arm works very well and of course I, it's nice and thick I can take a bit off the top and uh, remachine it to do another job but this I've used several times for, for machining small parts. It isn't the part itself that you have to machine very often, but it's the mounting plate or the, the fixture that will enable you to uh, finish the part itself. So usually for every part you make, you've got to make something else as well. But then that's part of the fun. Better looks at the cylinder. These are the two cavities, steam cavities. The central hole is for the exhaust space. And uh, of course four bolts at each end to hold the cylinder cap and the uh, crosshead guide in place.